Hey, this is going to be part two of that demo video I just made uh, because I realized I did in fact forget a couple of important things and I'm going to try to cover them, see if I can remember all of what I forgot. So, what first? Let's go to one of these. That a lot. Let's do Wizard and Synths. Right. Little subdued. So these are doing frequency mods. Right here, these three mod entries here. Calling that an entry. Uh, so each of these has LFOs chosen as the source. Let's see if I can scroll up, you might be able to see that. This is a large source menu. So near the end, there's a bunch of banks, user knobs, etc., CVN. So I'd have LFOs, and then the destination. Similarly, uh, we've got basics, just one at a time, two at a time, three at a time, all four. And then everything from here on down is bank to bank. So if there's a, a bank source chosen, uh, then and one of these chosen, then it'll do like like this one is going to take three and four to four and one. So three is going to mod four, four is going to mod one. And uh, there's descriptions over here like shift right one two three to two three four. So it goes all the way down to uh, permutations of four. So this one is modding three. This one's modding 4, this one's modding 4. And it's all being scaled by user 1. Mod amount. So I've got a couple of these set up on different Thors. Got a feedback knob, which I think is hooked up to the mod amount. Yeah. Oh, so I wanted to talk about the grid. I barely touched on it last time. So these two uh, device patches are using average, real basic. Got eight buttons here, two sources. These are special sources. So this one's uh, all four LFOs. These are all lit up and saying it's being used. So other possibilities in here, I call them functions. Uh, scroll down a bit. We've got some multiply and average. Those are all basic. They're going to use all of whatever is uh, chosen. And then we've got selection functions, which use this LFO to choose things. So now it's choosing the minimum, max, narrow, wide, random. Loop. Loop backwards. Uh, so this this stuff is triggered by the LFO and also gate hits, which I'm not going to show now. I don't have it set up. So let me go back to, oh, let me not go back to that. So if you have it on one of these uh, selection functions, you can use this crossfader section. This is an S-curve and a function. You click that, and then it's going to fade between uh, each selection. If I turn that off, it's going to be a straight linear fade. Now it's an S-curve fade. And so this stuff also applies to the faders. I'll choose the left-right. And that, that's being S-curved via this. This is ignored, but this is only for the selection functions. Oh, and also the selection functions have a... Uh, that's a bad one. So maximum here. No LFO. It disables the LFO and it makes a new choice every batch instantly. They also have smooth. And a CB delay, which is going to be hard to hear, but it's 
the CV delay. <laughs> you probably know how that works. So it has a lot of these controls are basically like the LFO controls, um, and they're not all labeled to save on space, like the high, mid, low, etc. Um, a few special options in the back, but that's not terribly important. There is a delay function right here. This is normal delay, and this is just you know some other function instead. Um, so that's the grid. Let me find another patch here. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I don't want to... There we go. I don't want to leave that. Hmm. That's doing the same thing. Oh, I'll show you some waveform stuff here. Random. So, so far, I think I've only shown you random hard. I could do random sign on all these. It's still one shot, so it's going to do one movement. I do end shot. We just set the four four, so it's going to take a while. Trigger when I hit the gate, and it'll keep doing it until I until I let go of the gate. The gate is being driven by the note here, so this is receiving notes via the combinator. This is selecting a mono legato style. If I selected the others, it would uh, re-trigger with every note hit. So let me undo that. Uh, so, like I said, that can all be, uh, they can all use this random seed and it can be repeatable with every playthrough and with tempo changes. I think it may, like, if you start doubling or maybe quadrupling the tempo or vice versa, it may start to not work as well. But it's it's pretty good for moderate tempo changes. Uh, I'm going to do a bunch of stuff. Also, the steps, I had mentioned the steps before. Uh, and now I have a cat meowing at me, so we'll see if this works. Uh, yeah, the steps. There are other step types in here. Steps expanding. So if I turn that just to normal. Step expanding, there's also a random step. Which is similar to this random hard, except it's going to do it uh, for this number of steps. But you can also do alternating with zero and whatnot with that. down, expanding, just alternate with top. So lots of different ways of doing that. Okay. Quantizers. Let me find something that will make sound. patch but you can see it. Now the smooth knob right here will smooth that. There are other functions available including you can use these curve sections as functions which means then the LFO can't use them. But you can do some pretty neat stuff. You can curve, you can get like a, you can use the window to do uh, I have it queued up here think. Yeah, so these two curve sections are being used by the quants. You can see it's not a regular hit. Again, this third quant is the combo of the first two. So the first one is using curve section one. It's just a, kind of a basic curve. 
The second one is using an S-curve, and oh, they're both using Windows. So they're doing it over a number of hits, 24 and 8. Oh, just a word about ROCC. ROCC is an equal function. The others are not. So there are these two different versions. I don't really feel like explaining that. I'm not sure I can explain that easily, but basically these are all different. This is just linear stuff, shifting and whatnot. Still comes in handy for certain waveforms. Uh, but these are curves. And then, oh, it's a little bit off screen. ROCC, the very last one, is basically the same in both directions. So these mid knobs, when they're curving, let me just show you a, a real basic curve. So if I chose log, and then I'm going to use the function on this mid, if I make them approximately equal, it's still going to do something that isn't a sine wave, or a regular sine wave. But if I go to the ROCC, they're going to cancel each other out because of the nature of the function. So the um, so you can use this with a single function with everything but RLCC uh, to get kind of a, an S curve, or you can use the shapes. Oh, let me choose double S curve. This little thing toggles like one goes up in a weird phase direction and it can do some weird funky stuff and the other one goes more left and right like the uh, this curve amount knob. Uh, oh yeah, so, so if it's ROCC then it doesn't matter because it's, what this is essentially doing is moving the midpoint. If I don't curve it, it's doing a linear adjustment. So I like to curve it so that everything is curvy. Oh, I've lost track. Oh, okay. ROCC mods. I have not talked about mods too much. No, I did talk about mods. <laughs> I don't think I showed you some really good mods. I'm not sure what I have. This one was frequency. So this isn't actually the patch that's included. I had done some stuff on a previous take, including adding this right here. So I'm sure you've seen, noticed like these LFOs moving back and forth. That's these fancy mods, obviously, which I think I've talked about. But a lot of my patches, I like using heavy curve amount feedback, feedbacking mods to give a lot of variety. And these mod sections, uh, this this menu right here, which you never need to mess with. <laughs> it's there for backwards compatibility purposes. And if I improve on the function, I can add another option there. But basically, that makes uh, these curves, sorry, these mods, when they're modding curves, uh, happen smoothly. Akin to how, let me uh, show you this on another one. I find one that's not being modded. <laughs> And how if you change the frequency, it's going to be smooth. But if it's on sync, it'll jump around to match the play position. So the mods basically then, the curve mods, will match the phase, adjust the phase, and keep this output smooth. So you can do really complex mods and still have all of your LFOs be smoothly um, moving around rather than glitching and like uh, generating these sudden uh, gaps. So uh, it does that by doing a reverse curve section essentially and matching the phase. Uh, I'm almost out of time again. My cat's still meowing at me. And uh, like I said, it's in the shop or it will be in a day or two depending on when you see this video. And uh, thanks for watching. Try it out. And there are more made some more intro videos that do a little better job of explaining everything in detail and I set up, uh, I use a basic uh, Thor patch to basically demonstrate what these things sound like on the uh, filter. Uh, so that's the intro series and then there's another series where I build up a patch that I made a month or two ago. A uh, patch that is included in these combinator patches. So anyway, thanks for watching. Later.